Stacy. I'm Jenny. And this is Learning for Life, a homeschool podcast. We are two homeschoolers who use different methods, curriculum, and strategies to make it all work. Our goal is to help parents teach kids how to develop a lifelong love of learning. Welcome back, everybody, to the Learning for Life podcast. We're so glad to have you here. Yes, we are super excited. This has been like quite the adventure starting this podcast and we're so glad that you guys are coming back week after week to listen to us talk yes it's quite flattering isn't it I mean why would anyone want to listen to us I'm not quite sure I mean we must do something right (laughs) yeah well we we appreciate anyone who's left us a review or a rating or follows us on Spotify any of that so thank you for doing that and if you haven't already make sure you do that so that you get new episodes as soon as they come out we release them once every other Wednesday so that's our schedule for now yes and leaving us a review it also helps other people find the podcast Um, I know when we like first launched the podcast, it took a few days for us to even come up and search, even if you like searched our exact name um, in like Apple iTunes store. So uh, making sure to like leave even, you know, can can they do just stars? Yeah, you could do. Yeah, you can do just a rating. So you don't even need to type something if you don't want to. Yes. So doing that would really help us out. And we really appreciate that. Right. Well, Stacy, what should we talk about today? I know personally here at my house, it's getting pretty warm. It is. I am so excited for summer. I think that would be a great topic about um, what homeschoolers do in the summertime. Right. I think that's such a fun thing to talk about. And it's interesting because everyone does something completely different. There are people who are strict like we do no school during the summer. And then there are people who are like, no, I can't stop right now. I'm just going to keep going during the summer. So I guess let's just like dive right in. Um, Stacy, what do you plan on doing for your homeschool this summer? Yeah. So the most exciting thing when we launch this podcast episode, I will have a week left of teaching at my job and a week left in my kiddos home uh, school year. So we are very excited to finally have summer and dive on in, literally, um, to (laughs) summertime activities. We definitely plan on utilizing the pool and doing lots of fun activities like we plan are planning a road trip this year because it wasn't something you could really do last year. And um, on top of that, though, you know, we, we have things like that planned, but we also will be doing some sort of, I mean, yes, it's schooling, but at the same time, I feel like it's just maintenance, if if mm-hmm. people like to think of it that way. Um, doing maintenance and maybe a little bit of a small amount of catch-up. Um, this year, for everybody, was super crazy, um, so I know that I plan on making sure that we are um, getting as far as I had hoped to get with my kids' math curriculum. So that's one thing that we'll be focusing on. I'll also be using this time to review and reflect to pick curriculums for the next school year and looking at all of that. There's a lot, Jenny. I don't know where to start. Yeah. Well, how about you start with your schedule? So just to be clear, you're off work all summer, right? I am. Lucky you. Yeah. So once the school, I know it's the, the one perk of being a teacher is um, that that was actually a huge motivator to um, <laughs> getting my credential. And like, I remember when I was trying to decide what to do, um, my mom is also a teacher and she was like, well, at least if you're a teacher, you get summers off. And I'm like, eh, let's do that. I mean, I like teaching. So that also had something to do with it. But right. um, I had other things that I also would have enjoyed doing. So I was just like, you know what? Summers off sounds like a great idea. Let's do that. All right. Well, I think you're a great teacher, so it was definitely the best choice you could have made. And also the fact that you're... thank you. Oh, yeah. And when also, I mean, you're homeschooling. It's just all, like, goes together in my mind. Um, So so you're going to be... You're not going to be working. So are you going to have any sort of routine or sort of thing with your kids this summer? Yes. I do plan um, on trying to establish a better routine Right now, with the end of the school year, like the past month or so, has just been crazy with like our life situation and everything that we've have. It's been very hard to get into the schedule that we're used to. 
um, that we had been used to with homeschooling. So things are a little crazy. So I'm hoping to go ahead and start getting back in the routine of waking up, eating breakfast, and then having the kiddos get right into their schoolwork. Um, you know, there's been times where like I have a meeting, so my husband takes them um, to do errands with him. So then they're like having to do school later in the day or whatever the case may be. So for us, I want to get back in the routine of eating breakfast and starting on some schoolwork. And so in the summertime, that's just going to be um, some Brain Quest workbooks. Mm -hmm. I really, really love the Brain Quest workbooks. And so what I do is over the summer, um, I did this last year as well. I just buy the next grade up. So I have a TK first and second grader right now, but next year they will be kindergarten second and third. So I just buy the K13 mm -hmm. curriculum for for Brain Quest. And so that way there's, you know, some of it might be might even be review for them and then some of it is just kind of an introduction to topics that they'll that we'll be covering in the next school year so i really like that because then it kind of shows me oh hey they really understood learning adjectives i don't know you know off the top of my head what the actual lessons are but right oh they, they pick that up really easy i probably won't have to spend much time on that but oh hey they were getting introduced to this um other concept and having a hard time with that it, it it's it's good for me because I'll, i kind of can know oh okay they what to plan for next year how fast I think I can go through certain curriculums or topics or anything like that I like that you mentioned the brain quest workbooks because you and I both have experience with them you have more experience with them than I do probably but those books are really in depth and they have all sorts of subjects in there it's not like your typical little workbook it's really thick there are tons of pages and there are like just sub subjects in there I don't know what to call them like subcategories because like for mm -hmm. math there's multiple things like telling time or money and then like you know typical math that you think of in your head when you think of math and then there there's just everything in there and those workbooks are also really affordable yes yeah they're not I mean I'd have to go look it up but I mean I want to say 20 to 30 dollars max no I um, definitely let I think they're more like 10 dollars each are they? That's yeah. crazy. I, I I should probably fact check this as we're going, but um, yes, I, go for it. I'm gonna because it. I mean, I remember being shocked at how how cheap they were. Let's see. Yeah, I mean, I just got. So I just ordered mine, and you'd think I'd remember, but I don't. Um, but yeah, like you said, they have ev like all the different subjects. So I know. I mean, with your sciences and your histories. That stuff that you just kind of in the early grades, you're trying to just in, expose them to different topics so that when they start learning about them in future years, they already kind of have a basic understanding mm -hmm. so that they can then dive even deeper. Yeah. Um, so I really like the Brain Quest workbook because it introduces them to different history topics and science topics that we, that at least they've been exposed to it. So throughout the year, when we go over something else in our um, science curriculum, they're, they're like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that we already talked about this. And it's, they're definitely not supposed to be used as like a complete curriculum, but yeah, I like that they're kind of like entry level for all ideas and then you can dive into them on your own like those those ideas and concepts a little deeper throughout the year so I like that you do it during the summer because it's still school it's still establish establishing a routine that works but you know it's not like heavy duty this is school time you know because it's still summer and you want to go <laughs> do things okay do you want to hear how much they cost hold of like course buckle up because this will astound you um they are available for less than $7 each on Amazon. What? Yes, they are that cheap. <laughs> Isn't that shocking? Stacy not Stacy shocked because these are huge workbooks. They're massive. Like they are I feel like you 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 pay that much for like a Spectrum or Evan Moore workbook. Yeah, yeah. And spec those are much smaller. So, yeah, I yeah. I mean th those are really, you know, they they're, they're different. They're a totally different type of breed of workbook, but yeah, so I and you're sure you're looking up the regular, not the summer brain. Quest, yeah, there's right? brain quest workbook in kindergarten paperback on Amazon for six seventy four, six dollars seventy four. Wow. Cents. So we'll, we'll link crazy. to these <laughs> if you're interested for sure, because <laughs> all of them yeah. seem to be about so, that same price. So there you go. 
Um, yep. Yeah, and they're also, I believe they're like standards aligned too, to, for the most part, um, mm-hmm. at least to like common, maybe common core. I'm not sure. Yeah. So speaking of like curriculum in general, are you going to continue with any of your like, you know, usual school curriculum during the summer or are you only going to use the Brain Quest workbooks or what's your plan with all that? I'm... As of recording this, <laughs> I'm still trying to decide. I know we'll be doing a little bit of math of a primary mathematics mm-hmm. um, just to make sure we get as much done as I was hoping to um, at the beginning of this year. But as far as anything else, I'm trying to decide. Um, I'm already kind of brainstorming. I know I want to focus on writing for my third grader mm-hmm. or soon to be third grader and um, and spelling. So those are two things. So I'm trying to decide if I want to start kind of introducing that in the summer or if I want to just wait and really um, go full throttle at the beginning of the school year. So that is something that as of recording this, I'm not quite sure, but I know I'll be using some math and then, you know, we'll be doing our our daily like um, reading every day, our silent reading, our um, read alouds that I've uh, been tracking. Another thing that I thought about this um, to maybe start working on this summer is I realized that my third grader for California will be state testing age and there's a writing portion at the end of the year. So that was kind of why I wanted to do the writing and just kind of developing those skills to make sure that he's not completely lost when we get to that point of the end of the year and just giving him uh, the tools. So again, I'm just kind of going back and forth on if I want to start in the summer when I know like I'm off and I have more time um, or if I want to just wait till the end of the school uh, to the start of the school year. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like, do you want to do it now while you have time or do you want to do it closer to when it's actually going to be applicable? I mean, with writing, you kind of have to ramp up probably but Mm -hmm. um I'm interested to see how that goes because that might be me in a year uh not this year but next school year so I'm interested to see how that goes with him because I don't know I don't know anything about these tests I haven't taken them for many many years (laughs) yeah I mean I know that your oldest and my oldest are very similar in the way they've been learning so far at Mm -hmm. least um, as to, you know, like both of them kind of were hesitant, not hesitant. They both ne- not neglected. What's the word I'm like? Look for a positive to reading. word. I know they, they, they both were standoffish to resistant. reading. Resistant. It wasn't that they couldn't. Yes, resistant. It wasn't that they couldn't. They just didn't want to. And so it's just really funny that like our younger kiddos are like picking things up so much faster. Yeah, isn't that um, true? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that was really interesting. So again, I'm going to say this advice, but I know if, you know, your oldest is like my oldest, you'll probably be waiting till third grade as well. But mm-hmm. um, like I kind of wish that I had started more writing this year at least you know more like paragraph stuff small paragraphs for a second grader but we just like did not get that far yeah there it's really amazing though with writing because you know we use explode the code which is all very like basic writing it's like one syllable words at least the point we're at right now with um, my oldest is in Mm -hmm. book three she's almost in book four and um it's really amazing going back because even like a few pages previous with both of my kids, if you go back just a little bit, I mean, their writing improves every single time. And so I think the scary part for your oldest is like now he's going to have to be writing full sentences and spelling things right and like making... and typing it all. Oh, is that how it works? I was I wasn't sure about that. Yes, the state testing is all done on computers, so they have to be able to type. So that's something else I'll be we, – we do have, like, typing club for them, but mm-hmm. it's just been kind of like a fun thing they can do on the computer. Yeah. Um, every once in a while, we don't really utilize it to its full uh, capabilities, but definitely something I'm going to need to be incorporating more next year as well. Gosh, that's so interesting. Wow, I should be writing this down. <laughs> Okay, well, I'm we'll, like doing a lot of my brainstorming right now. <laughs> we'll we'll just type this out right now for you as we go, so that to save you time. That's why we do a podcast, right? Just to like you know organize our thoughts. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> well, yeah, we've actually. I mean, we're not going to go on like a whole tangent about this, I don't think. But we've been doing typing club too because I my kids have really been wanting to type, 
So yeah, it's that's really cool. And it, it's interesting because that is a skill that kids are going to need more so than even you and I did really. Mm-hmm. Not to age ourselves. <laughs> <laughs> well, okay, so... I mean, I guess we're kind of getting into this. I know that you have some trips planned, so I want to talk to you about that in a bit. But like homeschool wise, are you planning any like consistent activities for them this summer? Are they going to do any extracurriculars? What do you have planned as far as those are concerned? I think we're going to continue doing um, my two younger kiddos have decided to do piano and my oldest has decided he wants to do guitar. So wait, wait, wait. so your second one switched from guitar to piano? Yes, for those of you that um, don't know, so my my older two both wanted to do the guitar. So what? How old are they? Seven and eight, maybe. He's almost seven right now. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, and then my middle, and then my youngest was going to do piano just because it's you know easier that way to start mm-hmm. the fingers working a piano than trying to do the guitar. And then my middle child did not like the guitar very much. And so luckily we only bought one guitar that they could both share. Um, But he, we talked about it and he's like, oh yeah, I want to do piano instead. And so that day I was like, okay, well, let's come see if you even like to do this. Mm -hmm. And he he really did. Like he was doing well with me. So I was like, okay, cool. All right. You you can do piano now. I could see him Um, just doing really well with music because he can focus so intensely on things Mm -hmm. at once so I think that as long as he loves the instrument that he ends up with I think that he could really do well like I'm interested to see how that goes yes so I mean like I was originally really bummed I'm like wait what do you mean you want to like not do guitar and so but it took me a second you know he told me that you know a couple days in a row like oh I don't want to practice my guitar I don't like it and I'm just like well you know commitments right you know you gotta you, you made a commitment to it But then when I sat down, you know, later on that week and really talked to him and I learned it wasn't because he just wanted to quit music altogether. It was more he wanted to just do a different instrument. I was like, okay, well, let's let's go try that out. So, yeah, it was a lot of just like communication that Mm -hmm. sometimes we forget that, you know, kids will say one thing, but they probably mean something different than what you think they mean. Such a good lesson. That's something that I need to remember because sometimes I just find myself like shutting them down like, oh, no, blah, blah, blah. And then yeah. I'm like, wait, uh, maybe I should revisit that. But you know what? Do you know what I'm thinking here in real time? And this is something we have not talked about yet, but we should do now that all of our kids are doing music, we should do some sort of uh, episode on like why kids should learn music, because I know I've seen a lot of benefits in my kids. So let's put that on our list, on your list that you're making for your plans. We'll add that there (laughs) because I would love to talk more about this because, you know, it's fascinating to me. And, you know, I like playing music. So, you know. Yes. Jenny, we'll we'll start a band with all of our children one day. So be on the lookout for that. Oh, my gosh. That's an amazing idea. Well, I've (laughs) always wanted to start a band. Of course, a family band. That's the only reason I'm having kids. And um, I've always wanted to start a band. So instead of Benny and the Jets, it would be Jenny and the Bets. And sure, it can be an all kid <laughs> band. That sounds fun to me. <laughs> so, uh, do you have any other activities planned other than music for your kids? At the moment, no. We we thought about it really hard before, um, like the school year ended. If we wanted to get started, because you know everything started opening up in like March and April, um, at least to be able to go utilize the activities with our school charter Mm -hmm. because we weren't uh the charter wasn't allowed to do out um in-person activities but once we were um I didn't want to get started and then again we do have a road trip planned and I wasn't sure what else we might want to do this summer so I didn't want to let them start for just like one or two months and then have to stop and um what we were thinking about doing was a um ninja warrior class for them and it it takes because I now have three kids in the class in doing a class and they're all at a different level it takes a lot of coordination for me to get them all in the correct classes Mm -hmm. so that I'm not going there three times a week um so that I'm only going there once for maybe two or three hours but not you know like three times a week yeah that makes sense so I didn't want to like get all that planned and then have to stop and then have to do all that again when in like in the spring sorry in the fall (laughs) (laughs) it's okay my mind is gone too after this school year well 
tell us about your trip. I want to hear all about this. And I know it's a big thing that your family has been planning for like the past couple of years. So tell me all about that. You, you make it sound like I, I, I have so much to say. Tell um, us all about I mean, every can... single stop you're making. <laughs> Yes. And unfortunately, I don't even know all of that yet. It took us a while just to figure out kind of the logistics, one, where we were going exactly and how we were going to get there. Were we going to drive? Were we going to fly? Were we going to take a boat? I mean, like nothing was off the off the table at one point. And <laughs> although the, the boat thing was never an option and now I'm considering it. Actually, that um, sounds great. Honestly. Right? Take We should have taken a cruise. I bet they're really cheap right now, too. Probably. <laughs> Um, okay, so I'm going to put that on my list over here of plans that Stacy is working on. But anyway, so we are going to do a cross country road trip. Uh, we are going to go since we live in California, we were thinking of going California to Florida using a northern route, and then going Florida to California using a southern route. And we've decided to just drive. And that's kind of uh well, we what are know some, a few things. I Yeah, what are some stops you're going to be making along the way? Do you know any of those yet? Yes. Yeah, so there's a couple that we do know, not a whole bunch. I want to, the northern route, we're definitely going to go see Mount Rushmore. Ooh. Um, and then we're also going to be visiting some family we know in Arkansas um, who moved there a few years ago. So um, they've come to see us a few times, but we haven't been to see Arkansas. So I'd love to go visit and um, we've also got some other family in Tennessee, so we're going to go there, and then we're going to go down to Florida. Um, we had considered going to some of the big parks there in Orlando, but I think we've decided against that. That could change. Um, I think it'll depend on the day. You'll get there, and you'll be exactly. like, oh, Dis- Disney World is right over there. Okay, well, we're going. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I don't know if you can get reservation uh, with COVID oh. and everything. I don't know if you can get right. Re- you have to like get a ticket and then get a reservation. Mm-hmm. So yeah, but we have considered, you know, we were looking at some options. Um, I guess there's Dollywood in Tennessee. It's supposed to be really cool. It's like Dolly Parton's theme park. Well, there's also um, Graceland in Tennessee, uh, you know, where Elvis yes. lived. I'd love to go there. So there's lots of stuff in Tennessee now. Yeah, so that's kind of at the the stage the stage we're at with our planning. We know like the states, some of the stops we want to do, and now it's just kind of breaking it all down into okay, day one, how far are we going to drive? What are we going to see on that day, if anything? Um, so yeah, that that is where we're at for now. And um, one thing that has really been helpful because. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I wonder how she like is figuring this all out because like Google Maps is not really made to have a bunch of different stops and along the way as much. It can be kind of difficult. So an app I found, it's an app and a website I found is called Road Trippers. And so basically you can put in the destination of where you are and then where you want to go. And then it'll show, show you, you know, here's how long it takes. And then it'll give you on like you can change it to be like five miles 30 miles on either side of the path that it had selected for you it'll show you what's near like as you're driving by like what's near there so one of the things that I was able to see just off the top I don't remember what state it was in but it was like the largest rocking chair ever or something (laughs) and so you it's you know probably not something that you have to like pay for but you could like stop at the side of the road and stretch your legs and be like hey look that's the largest rocking chair in the world or something so that was really cool to see that so I was gonna make sure to have that app on my phone so as we're going if we're like oh we need a rest stop is there anything cool nearby that we can stop and see that um that's been really fun and then you can change points so you know i put in california to florida but then i knew we wanted to see um mount rushmore so i put that point in there so then it like reroutes you to show you um other possible things so that has been really fun to play around with and i can't wait to really dive into that website and finalize our plans that is so cool I think you know it's it's interesting because I think we had a road trip only two or three years ago it was before I had my youngest before I was even pregnant with her and it would have been really nice to have something like that so I don't know if it just didn't exist back then or what but that sounds really really cool and I'll have to use that yeah roadtrippers.com it's like free if you have up to like six points 
uh, like six markers of where you want to go. And then if you want more than that, you have to like pay. And it was only $30 for a year. So I was just, I mean, $30 to have that on our, I mean, this is going to be a two plus week trip. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know how we're going to do it. You Um, need all the help you can get. (laughs) So you need to pay. Yeah. So I'm like uh, trying to. So that's one other thing that I'll be doing a lot of research on. And let me know if you guys want to hear more about my trip, either either here or on YouTube. Um, I don't know if I should do like a little a little vlog type style about it or then just showing videos of like you know, car hacks that I figure out along the way. Cause you know, what am I going to pack for my kids to do in a car for eight hours? I've got to do a lot of research on all of that. Yeah, that is, that would be actually really, really interesting. Cause since I've been homeschooling, I have basically been homebound. So I haven't really like gone anywhere. I've never done car schooling. So I'd be really interested to see to hear about your experience with trying to incorporate anything that's like sort of educational on this kind of trip. And it sounds like some of the places Mm -hmm. you're going to are specifically educational, like, like, you know, Mount Rushmore or wherever else you're going to go. So that I I just can't wait to hear all about it. I can't wait to share it because that'll mean that we have done it and survived. (laughs) Right. Well, I hope to talk to you along the way unless um, you won't be taking my calls. (laughs) You can call me anytime. Okay. Okay. So, Jenny, I have talked a ton about what my summer homeschool plans are, but now I want to know what you have planned. So, as far as I know, you'll still be working your full-time job Mm -hmm. from home throughout the summer, correct? Yeah. So, I mean, it's fine that you talked for as long as you did. Because to be completely honest, your summer sounds a lot more interesting than mine will be. Yours sounds more relaxing already. <laughs> I mean, yeah, I, I, you couldn't pay me and to enough to be in a car with for two weeks with my kids. Like to be completely honest, I would never like that's just we did a trip, you know, the road trip that I mentioned a couple years ago, and I was only on it for half of the trip. It's kind of hard to explain, but I met up with my family in Colorado. I flew there and then we drove back together. And just that was too much for me. I don't like that. So you also, okay, that was a few years ago. So your, your experience is also with really young kids. Um, I'm actually True. really excited that, you know, we're going to be doing this trip and we have like no diapers we have to mm-hmm. worry about. And, you know, so no one has to worry about diaper changes. But it's easier with diapers. because Very true. There is that. (laughs) So, I mean, this is just my pessimism coming out. Like, I would love to do a road trip like this. I know my mom was one of four. And they went on one of these really long cross-country trips together. And they still talk about it. Like, every single person in the family. It just left. Oh, wow. Yeah, it just left such a big impression on them. And all the kids remember different things. And they have all these, like, legendary stories. Like, at one point they were stuck on a railroad like they were stuck in traffic and they were on a railroad track and a train was coming like this is the kind of stuff that oh my they remember I don't I don't know the full story so if you guys want to hear more about it let me know because I'll find out the real story but they all have like all these really great memories from the trip and I would love to do something like that but I'm still road tripped out from that trip a few years ago so <laughs> and I was only on half of it like I said so anyway you're you're a saint you're you're much better than me for for doing that <laughs> no but <laughs> thank you <laughs> so anyway yeah I'm staying home because I still work full time and yeah and my husband started a new career so it's just a lot of being home working really really hard especially this summer probably just like making up for a whole year of basically not working so yeah I mean it's like completely opposite I'm just now realizing completely opposite from your routine so this will be interesting yeah so what are you going to do schedule wise over the summer with your kiddos so I basically am probably just going to keep the same schedule because it's all around my work schedule. So Mm -hmm. I so if you've heard of my schedule before, then this will sound familiar. But I, you know, I work really early in the morning. I I get up around five and then my lunch is around 10 a.m. So I've been doing school in that 10 a.m. hour, roughly around then. So like from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. And I get all of it done in that one hour, hopefully. Otherwise, we have to do more after I'm off work later, which I really just hate to do. So and I keep lessons short anyway. So it it's pretty much possible most days. But, there, you know, you know how there are some days where 
things just aren't going the way that they need to go. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> so I will be doing that this summer. I do plan. So we're, we have some family coming to visit us this summer. So that'll be nice. I hope to take some random time off uh, just here and there. I uh, just I just look forward to like hopefully this summer will be a little bit more normal than last summer was. Because we were just, yes. we were so out of our element last summer that I don't even know if I did any school last summer. I probably didn't, to be completely honest, which is fine. Most, a lot of people do that. But oh, I, oh, yeah, totally. But I'm going to keep up with homeschooling consistently this summer. I just feel like that's the only way we're going to get through as much as I would like to get through in a year. So I don't really count a school year as August to May or June. I consider it, you know, from August to August. So, uh, I do it year round. I'm going to do it year round. I I just can't see myself stopping also because I feel like we have momentum right now. Like my kids know what's expected of them. So if I were to stop, uh, it would probably be really hard to get that train going again. Yeah. I mean, kids totally thrive on routine. So mm-hmm. yeah. Get, and that was one thing that I was at a park with some other homeschoolers And there was this, you know, veteran homeschooler who, you know, her daughter was getting accepted into all these, you know, elite colleges and she'd homeschooled her. Um, But she was telling a story about how one summer she actually did like not do anything. And by the end of the summer, the kids like came back. And this is when they were probably in middle school, high school. And by the time fall came around, the kids had to get back into the swing of things. And the kids actually were asking her like, hey, can we not not do anything anymore um, because it was so hard for them to get back into the swing of things. So like it was so much easier. We just still a little bit over the summer. <laughs> right. Yeah. I completely agree with that. And I'm not like, if you guys know me like of Stacy and I, I'm much less, I'm much less like schedule oriented or routine oriented. Like Stacy's much better about implementing those kinds of things and sticking to them. But I just feel like this one hour that I have for my lunch, that's when I homeschool. Like this is my only semblance of routine and structure in my life at this point. So I just have to hold on to whatever shreds of schedule I can hold on to because otherwise like my life is just completely just unpredictable at almost every moment. So I plan on sticking with that. It's been working really well. Even my oldest daughter is starting to just like get up and do her schoolwork as early as she wakes up because she just wants to like I'm have jealous. it out of the way. Well, you said your oldest did that a while ago. He like wanted to do his check boxes and stuff. Like he wanted to do all the check. That marks. was like one day, Jenny. That oh, was one day. <laughs> you said it in a video. I thought it was, I thought it was like a consistent thing. So I was like, wow. No, no. I said it in a video because it had happened a couple days before that. <laughs> See, this is, this is just to illustrate like how homeschools just, everything changes all the time. So like I might all be saying this. So much. I'm saying this now, but you know. Next week, she'll probably be like, I don't want to do school anymore. And then I'll be like, oh, yeah, well, I just <laughs> lied. <laughs> so, yes. so Jenny, what I think we also want to know. So I love how you're going to keep that schedule going. Mm-hmm. But what are you going to do? What curriculums are you going to keep doing or using or anything like that? OK, yeah, I'll go over my little lineup and it's not anything complicated. It's just the same stuff that I've been using. Uh, I'm going to do, uh, let's see, what's my, let let me start with my favorite one, primary mathematics, sticking with that. Um, my goal is to have my oldest daughter done with book one B, which she, she'll probably finish it within the month or within the next couple months. Then we'll start book two A. I I love primary mathematics. Um, I know you do too. And, um, so, and then we'll do, we'll continue with all about reading. I actually plan on doing an all about reading review this summer. So that'll be really fun because. Interesting. Yeah. What is this? Well, you, you already did a review on it and then you convinced me to use this curriculum and I love oh, it. Oh, like a video review. Yeah. 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 Like a video Got review. Got it. I thought it was like a special, like all about reading review, like. Oh, like a, a, curric- a, a like, like assignment. Yeah, like 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 a, a part of the curriculum. Stacy, I'm not that creative or smart or anything. So. <laughs> That's so funny. You're like, ooh, what's this? We did not talk about this. No. um, Yeah, I was like, I don't know anything about this. What is this? I want to do a video on it. So I plan on like taking some B-roll footage of like the kids doing it because they just love it. They love the books. Um, Mm -hmm. Even though, you know, reading is so hard for young kids and I see that, but they just push through it because they love all about reading so much. So I have a lot to say about that curriculum and I would love to like give people more information about it as someone who like doesn't really like formal curriculums. 
Um, yes, I cannot wait to see like that review because I mean, for those of you that don't know, we talk a lot on here about like even if you buy a curriculum, you want to make it work for you. Um, curriculums are created with you know, multiple intelligences, you know, and multiple learners. Mm -hmm. And so they try to create something that's going to help everybody. But that doesn't mean that you need to do every single part of that curriculum. Um, and I'm speaking K-8 here. High school gets a little different. Mm -hmm. But um, when you have like a curriculum, like Jenny and I both use All About Reading, but we both use All About Reading completely differently. And um that's something we can maybe dive d in deeper in a, another episode or with your review. Maybe I'll have to do one yeah. too. So it can be like compare and contrast. Yeah. Have people vote on which way they like better. <laughs> okay. Okay. We, we love it. We love a good competition, huh, Stacey? We're very, yeah, I'm not competitive at all. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll see. We'll see how Stacey reacts when she loses. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, doing all that, still using explode the code. I'll probably take it easy on explode the code. I want to do more like actual reading and I know explode the code has reading pages in it where they have to do like some sort of reading comprehension. They check like, yes, that's true. Or no, it's not true or whatever for these little sentences. But I want to really focus on all about reading this summer. I think I have been, I've been using it, obviously. My kids have been making progress, but I really want to lean into it and I want to like make more time for like those, for those like sit down and really read the story time. Like, you know, it takes forever. Mm -hmm. It takes forever to teach a kid how to read. Oh my I gosh. I can all agree. <laughs> that is the one thing. Okay. If you are doing all about reading, I mean, we, we talk about it enough on every platform, mm -hmm. but that is the hard, the hardest part about teaching reading is, I mean, I think kids learn reading best with one-on-one -on -one instruction, and it is so hard and so boring yes. to listen to a kid sit here and sound out a word, and you're like, it says Pat sat. Like, <laughs> come on. Um, I, I mean, I'm patient, but oh my goodness. And then, you know, I had two kids that were on the same exact level at the same time, and so it's just like I had one kid read me a story and then the next kid had to read it. And I was just like, yes. I, I already knew what happened by the second time. So I was really bored. Um, it's not easy, but it is so necessary to have that one on one time. So yeah. if you are sitting down with your kiddos, ha listing them sound it out. I applaud you. Yeah. And, you know, you and I, between the two of us, we have like five homeschooled kids that are all really close in age. So it's like a lot of this all the time, I'm sure. Because yes. even my older daughter, she really does well with reading now. She's kind of flying through the stories at this point, but she still has to do them. And sometimes she'll get hung up on a word. And I'm like, you know, that's the word the. Like, what's going on here? <laughs> <laughs> but like, you know, my younger daughter, she's still she still kind of does that thing where she doesn't recognize words automatically yet. You know, where you can like just see a word and read it like the word pat. You're not going p -a -t. but she still does that with basically every word. And so, yeah, it takes mm -hmm. a long time. So we we're right there with you if you're doing that, too. <laughs> so, yes. yeah, we're doing all about reading. What are we what else are we doing? History. I need to I need to start. I keep saying I need to start volume two of a uh, story of the world because we finished volume one a few weeks ago or probably a few months ago. Now it's time flies and we're going to do our island story. I don't know. I mean, we're just doing all the same things. And then, oh, I wanted to mention science. Uh, I don't we've been doing KiwiCo, obviously, like that's probably one of our favorite things to do it's just for me it's a lot because I'm so busy I can't just sit there with them and like create this thing with them for the most part it's very easy but I just don't really have the time so I I, I do plan on having the kids do some more nature study outside especially because it'll be obviously like great weather there won't be snow or rain so just having oh, them yeah. do that and like, you know, farm schooling because we have lots of baby goats right now. Yeah, you do. I'm so jealous. <laughs> my my baby pigs don't look like baby pigs anymore. So <laughs> they're big. I know. It's crazy how fast all these spring babies grow because I mean, what is it like just the beginning of summer right now? And all the babies are like all babies are grown up because we also have like chicks and goslings and everything is just like completely full grown almost. So it's crazy. Yes. Um. So let's see, Jenny. What do you, so with All About Reading and all of your curriculum, um, what else, is there anything else you wanted to mention? Well, I guess I'm still sticking with the Ambleside Online kind of guidelines. If you're at all interested in the Charlotte Mason method, it's really great and it's free. You just kind of have to buy the books because it relies on books that 
are quality and um, teach lessons, whether they're like it's a nonfiction book or a fiction book. There's always a lesson to learn from the books that they suggest. So I really want to make more time for read alouds because we're going to be putting the TV away. I know I say that every time we talk, but we are going to be putting the TV away at some point. So (laughs) I do want to make more time for the read alouds and I want to do more of those stories. So I want to do like more Chronicles of Narnia. I want to do Parables from Nature. I want to do what are some other ones that Ambleside Online is telling me to do this year. Eventually, I need to start Pilgrim's Progress with my oldest daughter. I've been reading that on my own, and it's it's pretty interesting. So lots of things that I just I just want to read all the things with them, but it's just it's hard to make the time. So I, I hope to do that a little bit this summer. But I mean, like I said, it's going to be my same schedule that I'm doing now. So I don't know who I'm kidding. Like, when am I going to make time, <laughs> extra time? But I hope it happens. I hope the time materializes out of nowhere. Yes. Yeah. That That's one thing that I've been having issues with, too, is my boys are loving the read alouds we're doing, but finding the time. Um, I mean, my favorite times, it used to be right before bed. But now with the time change and it staying light so long, like I lose all track of time and then I realize, wow, it's bedtime and you guys are still up and we should probably eat dinner. Yeah. So if if any of you are also in that boat with the time change and, you know, just the summer, the day is getting longer every single day. Don't you hate that when it's like nine o'clock and then you realize, oh, it's time to eat dinner. Like I have, I still have to make dinner. (laughs) I hate that. Yeah. You're like, oh no. (laughs) Like what am I going to make really fast? Yeah. And so that's actually what I've decided. So while I, you know, I'll make them dinner and then while they're eating dinner, I, so it's technically kind of before bed, but so like when they're eating is another time that I will find read alouds Mm. because typically they have like food in their mouth. They're sitting in one place and they can listen. Yeah. Um, they're not going all over the place. So either before bed, like in their room or while they're eating a meal is the easiest times for that's us what, to do read aloud. That's kind of what we've been doing because we've been listening to the audio version of Our Island Story, which is a history of England um, written specifically for children. And I just, I love the book. I absolutely love it. Like, it's just blows my mind, this book. But um, I don't have the time to sit down and read it every night. And I usually like, I would like to do like two chapters a night. But there's a really great version of it for free on the app LibriVox, which is a free like streaming audio app, I guess you could say. So sometimes we've been listening to that at dinner and it's been working out really well. That is all really interesting, Jenny, that you're going to be able like that you're incorporating all of that into your homeschool. I think the last thing that I wanted to ask you is just what kind of activities will are you going to be doing any activities this summer? Yeah, I mean, we're going to continue with the piano lessons. I think the girls have really been enjoying that, like we were talking about. It just, I've been seeing so many improvements in so many ways from them doing music. So we will continue with that. I would love to go swimming with you if you will have us um, whenever you go swimming. (laughs) Yes, yeah. So I don't know if we mentioned this, but um, our our father-in-law and uh our, our grandfather-in-law <laughs> yeah. has a pool and so you know he's like hey come on over bring the kids so we we love to meet up there so that that's where you will probably find us this summer a lot yes so yeah I want to focus on like getting my kids both comfortable in the water which I mean I guess you know the situation with that they're kind of comfortable kind of not uh, I don't want to single anyone out here but um and then I, <laughs> and then I would like to um, get my kids in some sort of like physical activity. You know, they used to do the the gymnastics thing too, the Ninja Warrior class, Mm -hmm. but it's just not really, I don't know. I just don't know how possible it'll be this summer, but I would love to do some sort of outdoor sport. So I was thinking soccer. Soccer starts in usually August. So, and that's what I did all growing up was soccer. So I'd love to get them involved with that. But yeah, just th- just keep it up with what we're already doing. So I don't see anything really changing with our activities this summer. We are going to just go on some short maybe day trips, uh, maybe to the zoo or like to state parks that are relatively nearby. But yeah, I I just, you know, you know me, I'm just going to be here home working all summer. So not really a lot planned as far as like actual big things going on. So I think that about wraps up all the questions I had for you. And so I think we can kind of move on in to 
our it was going to be an every episode segment called our recommendation of the week. No, nope, the use I of the know, word was. Um, yes, was going to be, but we we've already missed a week of our recommendation of the week. But so we are back with this one here for you. And Jenny, do you have a recommendation for our view, uh, listeners? Viewers. <laughs> I hope they're not watching me. Um, <laughs> yeah, so, you know, I usually recommend something book-related. I wanted to kind of, like, throw you off the scent here because I don't want to recommend something book-related this week. I want to recommend Ooh. a movie that I just watched. <gasps> Jenny's going rogue. Yeah, I know. This is crazy, huh? Is actually on Disney+. Plus. I actually sound like Stacy right now because Stacy's our resident Disney excerpt expert. But um, so the movie is on Disney Plus and it's called The One and Only Ivan. Have you heard of this, Stacy? I have. Was it good? Okay. Well, the way. Okay. <laughs> I have mixed feelings. Not to but... give a full like, like review on the movie right now, but just right. in general. Okay. Yeah. So this is me just talking to my friend Stacy because we talk about what's on Disney Plus all the time. So, <laughs> so it's, it's good. <laughs> I don't know. I mean, it's enjoyable. The reason I'm recommending it is because so my husband saw like a trailer for it on Disney Plus because we just wanted to watch something new with the kids. We didn't want to watch the same things that we've already screened or already watched with them. So we wanted to watch something new. And my husband looked up a trailer and he's like, oh, that sound, that looks really cool. And then we looked on Common Sense Media and it was awarded like, you know, family choice movie or something. And so usually to me, that means, OK, it really is appropriate for the whole family. And it was definitely correct because the movie, I mean, you should watch it. Um, I'm not going to like rush to watch it again necessarily, but it was definitely completely appropriate for like all of my kids. So no, that is awesome. Like not nothing scary, nothing like inappropriate. It was just it was really just just a movie, like a calm movie. And you don't see those that much these days. Like everything has to be like super exciting or scary. Do you know what I mean? Mm hmm. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Yeah. So I will have to check that out because we're also looking for some movies um, to kind of, you know, non cartoons. That's kind of yeah. I'm trying to like get my kids out of this whole like, oh, only cartoons are for kids. It's like, no, there's other good movies out there. Right. That you can watch, too. Yeah. So just briefly, I mean, it's very it's like all CGI, basically, because it's about these animals that are part of this like sideshow routine and it's based on a true story you know, which I, I really miss homeward bound where they got actual animals to act out things okay are you gonna find a silverback gorilla that can emote the way ivan the one and only ivan does i don't i just don't know <laughs> he has like animal friends like he has a dog friend so anyway it looks really good you know how i like i'm one of the few people who likes the lady and the tramp remake and the dogs in that i have not finished that oh you have oh okay well I love that movie. I don't know why. It's embarrassing, actually, because I should stay true to like the originals. But anyway, I feel like the CGI and that was really good with the dogs. And that's how I felt about the one and only Ivan. I think the CGI was pretty good with all these little like farm, not farm animals, like zoo type animals. So I recommend it if you have even really young kids that you just want to like watch something and it's actually appropriate. So that's my recommendation of the week. What about you, Stacy? What do you have to recommend for us? I so one thing we had um, we have done recently and completed it for our science was we did it's from the company Insect Lore and it's called Cup of Caterpillars or Ladybug Land. I actually got both. So basically you buy the larvae status of these creatures and you watch them go through their transformation. So for the caterpillars, they come, it, they literally come in a cup and you don't have to do, the caterpillars I highly recommend because you don't have to do anything with this cup. There is like this pre-made food that they eat off the bottom mm -hmm. that like you don't even have to open the cup to, t to touch them. Like you shouldn't actually, I don't think they recommend you do. Please don't. Um, yeah, they just tell you to keep them in the cup and watch them. You watch them eat, you watch, and they grow so fast. It's insane to watch, like, I wake up one morning, like, the next morning, I'm like, oh my gosh, these caterpillars are huge. So you watch them eat, and then they go up to the top of the lid, and then they, like, hang, and then they turn into their chrysalis form, and then you wait, like, a day for the chrysalis, um, for all the, the caterpillars to turn into a chrysalis and have their chrysalis harden a little bit, and then you can go ahead and open the lid, and all of the chrysalis are hanging from the top of the lid. And then they give you a little lid stand and you take that stand and you put it into a butterfly like net 
mm-hmm. cage thing. Mm-hmm. And then you watch that you wait, I, I think it's like a week or two, um, for them to do their transformation. And then you watch them come out. And then you have butterflies that you can observe for a few days. You just have to put some sort of um, fresh fruit. Um, like I typically do like oranges, something very sweet oh. um, and liquidy. And then you just put that in there and then you can watch them for a few days and then you can let release them into your backyard and maybe they'll go lay eggs, you know, in your backyard and then you'll see more butterflies later on. That and sa- so cool. same same story with the ladybugs. They you put them in their little land, they eat the food that they provide and then they ladybugs also they don't look like ladybugs their whole lives. They're like this little black insect looking thing. And then they turn in, they go, they have their pupa form and then they come out as a ladybug. That is so cool. And I think that's really fun. I, aren't there like little figures that come with it too? So that the kids can see like a bigger version of what the different stages at which the bugs are at. Yes, you can buy the figures and they have all sorts of figures. I ended up when I, um, I first learned about this when I was running the daycare and doing my preschool and toddler curriculum, Mm -hmm. but I highly recommend I bought, they have a praying mantis figurine they have the caterpillars they have ladybugs they have a bee they have ants so they have all these different um things that you can look at and see the life cycle of it it's really fun and the kids would just love playing with those yeah yeah it's cool because it's kind of a secondary recommendation yeah ooh, bonus recommendation you heard it here first (laughs) you're welcome (laughs) well yes i think that wraps it up i mean i think we talked about everything about homeschooling in the summer that we could possibly talk about what do you think stacy i i think we have i think the only thing left to do is to um, remind everybody again we would really appreciate it if you would find us and uh rate and review us on the podcast apps yes and then if you want to um connect with us even further again we have our facebook group Um, And then we have Instagram. We love seeing people on there, chatting with people. And um, one fun fact is we, Jenny and I each have a clubhouse. Mm -hmm. So um, you can find us on there. I will make sure to put a link in the show notes with our exact usernames because we're both fairly new to clubhouse and I can't tell you I would be able to remember it off the top of my head. Yeah, we're newbies to clubhouse. So if any of you guys know anything about clubhouse, please let us know. (laughs) Yes. And if you want to hear us chat on there about anything, like, um, because that's one thing I, why, you know, I I told Jenny, I was like, we need to get Clubhouse because you can invite other people. And so we could really have these conversations and invite others into them. And so that is, um, you know, as much as we love these podcasts, I would love to have other people join in on these conversations and give some of their insight as well. Yeah, that's so fun. And yeah, just don't forget to also find us on YouTube and you can subscribe to our channel there. Yeah, we're just having so much fun doing all this. So we hope that you're enjoying it. And yeah, we continue. We hope to continue as long as we can. And on that note, I think uh, we will go ahead and see you next time. <laughs>